Hello all you watching the print, I am Rishika Sadam and joining us today on the print is CCMB's newly appointed director Dr. Vinay Nandikori. CCMB as we all know ever since the pandemic made its way into the country has been at the forefront of genome sequencing and several other studies and is also one of the national laboratories in the country that focuses on genome sequencing. Thank you for speaking to the print. One wave after the other, we are at the third wave right now. So when are these waves likely to end? And when we, you know, how do we determine the cycle of these waves? When are we likely to see the end of the third wave? Uh, if you go with this South African experience, the wave seems to have lasted around two months out there. But it varies from population to population. And our population is much larger. It is very difficult to predict when exactly it is going to come down. But if you really have to make a prediction, one would expect that something like uh, at the end of January, we may see the peak and then it starts coming down. Mm. But uh, it's anybody's guess. Uh, we hope that this whole wave would end by February, end of February. This is predictions which can go one way or the other. Right. There's also a question about how many more waves. I mean, it's become like a cycle, although with every wave we see that the preparation is maybe slightly better, but how many more waves is the question? Would it be possible to look at that? It is, it's kind of a uh, rhetorical question in one sense, because you really think about it. Um, mm -hmm. Flu pandemic was between 1918 and 1920. Even now we get flu. So it is likely that over a period of time, the pandemic will take the shape of endemic and it starts appearing in different parts of the world at different times. So it is going to ultimately get converted to something like a flu. Mm. But uh, virus is not going anywhere. It's going to be around and virus is constantly going to evolve. Depending on the selection pressure we give, there will be mutations in the virus and they get selected for. If we are vaccinated, they will try to the virus that gets selected for is one that actually can evade the immune uh, antibody response and immune response. If we have drugs that are treating the virus, it will try to evolve mutations such that it can uh, overcome that uh, inhibition by the drug. That's the nature's way of evolving. I mean, that's the way drugs evolve. That is the way evolution works. Right. Since you mentioned endemic, I'm going to uh, ask you this, you know, the spread of Omicron in most states across the country, it's estimated is easily 70%. Looking at uh, the factors of how Omicron is functioning with lot uh, faster spread and amidst a vaccination program, and there's also less severity of Omicron affecting the lower part of the respiratory system. So can it, would it be too soon to say that Omicron is probably sent a signal that COVID might soon be an endemic or would it be too soon to be that hopeful? Um, people are hoping for that but realistically uh, I would say that we'll wait and watch mm -hmm. rather than say oh this is the end of it or no more waves are going to come. I think it's too soon to talk about that because let's assume that we end up having a combination of mutations and that may actually evade the antibodies, uh, our body's response for the Omicron, then you, you can have further waves and further infections. So it's a constant, as I'm saying, the severity is going down is a relatively better news. And, uh, but we have to be prepared because the numbers are very high with Omicron infections. Right. Uh, talking about the severity, in terms of how the variant functions, what does CCMB understood when it comes to Omicron? How different is it from Delta, apart from its effect of lesser severity on in lower respiratory system and faster spread? What else do we know and how casually can we take it at the moment, looking at the uh, you know people behavior in the probably in cities and states? To be frank, we have not done any work on Omicron because we are still trying to culture Omicron in CCMB. Mm. So no work has been done from our end, mm. CCMB. But there is a lot of literature that has already come out from various parts of the world. Mm. And if you go with that particular literature that is published, recently I was seen a paper that was published in a JMA journal. Mm. And this was from South Africa. It appears that even those who are hospitalized, the number of people who are going on oxygen is lower. The people who are going on ventilators are lower. Eventually, death rate is lower among the hospitalized population. But still, people are dying of Omicron. And to say that, you know, we should take it lightly is foolhardy. Because at the end of the day, some of us 
our population would be elderly mm. some of us would have uh, comorbidities mm. given all these things it will take a toll on the population mm. even that percentage happens to be lower much lower compared to delta the fact is that somebody some people are still dying of omicron so it will be and the numbers are higher so eventually the there will be certain level, certain level of death associated with omicron so it will be important for us to be cautious careful mask up not go into major gatherings and take care mm. no infection is you know boon right when we talk about vaccines there's lot of doubts among people that the vaccines which were developed based on earlier pattern of virus will this work for omicron will this work for variants that would and for hopefully not but any other variants in the future where people who have taken all the two doses people who are yet to take doses so give us some clarity on that what where are we standing on the vaccines now so it is already kind of known that unvaccinated are always more prone to infection compared to double vaccinated people and double vaccinated people are better off than the single vaccinated people and most importantly vaccination provides us protection in the context of severe hospitalization severe illness and hence you know the chances of death go down significantly and if you look into uk this will be more apparent than uh, look at indian population mm-hmm. because when delta came by our vaccinated population was very low mm-hmm. but in uk the first wave versus the wave that came later uh, there was already vaccination that is the this year the wave that came in delta wave mm-hmm. or you can already see that the deaths were much lower so vaccination is important because even though antibodies that are against the spike protein of uh, the vaccine that you have taken may not be very effective in neutralizing the omicron uh, it is not as effective as neutral uh, it is in case of uh, other strains uh, there is scientific data for that but what is important is that there is t cell immunity in addition to this and there there may not be major changes means going forward you have your body has seen the one form of spike protein mm. it may not be effectively able to combat this mm. when it is entering but eventually severity of the illness will be lower if you are vaccinated yeah. so people should continue to get vaccinated right. talking about booster shots because even in the country we are uh, you know opening up for booster shots uh, people who are vaccinated with two doses are looking at how important is a booster shot should they rush for it there are a lot of apprehensions about it so how necessary is a booster shot at this moment in the country given our given the pace of our vaccination program? so in, in general any time you are giving one more dose of the antigen for uh, for vaccination basically you are going to your body is going to give you a higher Higher, higher immune response, mm. which essentially would give you a certain level of protection. So those people with morbidities, mm. comorbidities, and those who are uh, of a certain age who are eligible should go and take the booster vaccine mm. uh, or whatever that you it's called here right now. But uh, they should actually take the booster vaccine. So it will help. I mean, it's not going to be that it doesn't help. Mm. Right. when we talking about the spread of omicron in states uh, you also mentioned how it functions uh, how important does it become right now to detect omicron in the infected cases see well, if if you are with respect to the number of omicron cases yes. in a population yes. i think the surge seems to be coming because of omicron so right now the uh, figuring out whether it is omicron or not is a, not as important as figuring out if, how the new surges are coming and what kind of mutations additional mutations omicron may have acquired mm. so genome sequencing efforts mm. should continue basically to continue to track the variants that may emerge Mm. at a later point of time and as far as the r- sequencing everybody is concerned i think that is that may not be very essential because i think omicron is almost there in uh, uh, all of india right now mm. the percentages change from city to city uh, but in uh, majority of them at, i think the surge is completely because of omicron mm. given the mutations and the way it's op- it's operating uh, would it should we expect more variants or variants within the local circles in the country given our population and covid cases 
variants are a natural phenomena they will continue to emerge or mutations in virus are going to happen but every variant need not be a variant of concern mm. only those variants of those are considered variants of concern which have higher infectivity and in, spreads in a population faster mm. so we need to track them and some of them may end up being more important and that is where who comes in and they keep on tracking the sequences and look at the variants that are emerging and eventually they first declare something as variant of interest mm -hmm. finally as variant of concern so mm -hmm. there is a uh, there is a process for it mm -hmm. so sequencing is an only providing information about what kind of mutations a virus is accumulating but eventually something becomes a variant of concern requires a little more uh, thought thought process involved in it right. it needs to spread through a population quickly and various other aspects which who looks into uh, at the moment is it okay to extrapolate data from other countries to plan omicron spread in our country it is not exactly appropriate for multiple reasons yeah. because for example in uk yeah. people were vaccinated and then got delta wave and in india we were mostly first unvaccinated and got the delta wave yeah. and then doubly vaccinated which quite a lot of people here have hybrid immunity right <laughs> means they were they have seen the virus and they also have vaccines uh, vaccinated after that so it is difficult to compare a population from india with that of uk mm. and then you can come uh, compare with that of south africa mm. so the way it is going to like there will be my, there will be differences but wave is going to come but there will be differences in the way it spreads in a population but don't assume that we are we are uh, immune to the <laughs> omicron virus you know earlier in our discussion you mentioned about how uh, switch monit switch waste monitoring and air testing is very important specifically to understand the omicron spread so how significant data from there gives us an idea of uh, so Air surveillance is basically tells you about the virus load in a particular area and CSIR has done a quite a good job of establishing that air surveillance can be done and uh, we actually have done that you know tested these kind of equipments that were developed within CSIR and all but the point is that uh, if you have cross ventilations yeah. or you know there is another technology if you have uv lights in uh, uh, in certain of certain power in our uh, ventilation system yeah. then you kill the virus so if you have cross ventilation the spread is lower so in outdoors we actually can safely talk at a certain distance when indoors it becomes different yeah. so air surveillance is useful but i don't think it has become part of our uh, system yet yeah. okay and given uh, you know ev with every wave the preparedness of state or the central government definitely slightly better but if you had to uh, probably uh, give one piece of advice or probably suggest what the government is not already doing uh, when we look at these new variants and the spread what would that be i really believe that this time the response has been pretty swift and pretty good um we were not prepared at the time of second wave because i think nobody realistically anticipated the magnitude of that wave mm -hmm. i mean only thing i'm not anybody to really advise government on any of these things but what i would suggest population or the people should do is to avoid large gatherings mask up be careful that's all one needs to do so you cannot completely stop working with every wave coming or more waves coming but we should be we can be careful we can be vigilant and that's about that i really have no further advice other than this a little focus on public health the way tb was handled in public health have we done something right in tb public health that probably we are not doing during covid is there any take away from there that we probably have still not implemented here i believe we have done more for covid mm -hmm. than we have done for any other disease in terms of the speed of response the kind of things that we are doing the kind of science that is getting done across the world so uh, no not really the diagnostics are pretty much available to everybody and the only thing that i believe is if somebody wants to test themselves the diagnostic can be it should be easily available mm -hmm. like whether it is there are two kinds of diagnostics that are there one is the rt pcr phase the other one is rapid antigen test mm -hmm. rapid antigen test is these strips if those kind of things are easily available mm -hmm. uh, then you know one can test themselves whether they are actually uh, covid or not uh, a, 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 even at home mm -hmm. such kind of things can be done but 
generally speaking it's already there in india the diagnostic is very good and um, uh, with respect to hospital preparedness the second wave has changed that now they, there are a lot of hospitals have their own oxygen generating uh, capabilities and uh, uh, all these things have changed so i think given the our country science we are doing a pretty good job of whatever we need to do mm. Understanding the societal behavior, which before every wave, uh, one is a new variant that's leading to a surge. At the same time, restrictions coming down and probably a lot of reckless behavior from side of people is contributing to the wave. Uh, what do you understand from it? You know, masking up, avoiding gatherings is something that you've suggested. But looking back at before the third wave, what have we done extremely wrong that we're seeing a surge apart from the new variant that's in place? This Omicron actually as a variant, is approximately five-fold spreads faster than a delta so it's not that easy to avoid it only thing we can do is basically mask up and do the avoid gatherings and all uh, spread is inevitable anytime a wave comes uh, the only solution is to completely shut ourselves and which is not possible because there are other implications of completely shutting down and uh, any country mm. so we are kind of coming to a point where we are finding ways to uh, work around these uh, Omicron or uh, SARS-CoV-2 waves that are coming, hmm. one after other. Enough, Talking a little about the vaccine, CCMB in fact is working on an indigenous mRNA vaccine. What's the update on that? Are we looking at a tentative launch? See, it is. Um, there is nothing novel really about the mRNA vaccine. Uh, Moderna has done it, Pfizer has done it. We just want to develop the mRNA vaccine in completely indigenously we are doing it with the help of multiple institutes including iict it's a process it's going to take time and when if and when we are ready we will let you know that we have done it at this point of time we are uh, we know how to produce the mrna we know how to package it into lipids but these are all done at a laboratory scale they are not done at anything bigger than that so there are first thing is to be successful up to mice, mm. inject this into the mice and get an immune response. And second thing is to actually make it better and better as a process. What we are hoping for is this process of learning of mRNA vaccine with respect to SARS-CoV-2 and COVID would help us for future, yes, not okay. immediately for now. Okay, so but uh, any tentative time that we are looking at at least? I really would not want to commit on, um, uh, comment on that. Mm. Um, we are. I, I can say that our team is working quite fast and quite hard on this. And uh, if and when we are ready, I'll let you know. This is more to do a psychological question, actually, or maybe it actually has some science to it. There have been several cases in the last few days, specifically who got infected, who have not been infected in the first and the second wave and are vaccinated, but somehow the virus caught up to them in the third wave. Is it purely psychological or does it something have to do with the antibodies of people who have been infected in the earlier waves? That is what we are talking about, the hybrid immunity. Without a proper study where you actually divide the population into four parts, unvaccinated, uh, vaccinated, infected, infected and vaccinated, it is difficult to pinpoint and say, oh, this one gives you better, better production over the other. But if you really consider an infected and a vaccinated person, he actually has three doses in one sense. There was an infection followed by two rounds of vaccination. Right. But it is something that we have to do as a scientific study to segregate these groups and look at it. Right now, we don't get much of unvaccinated people. Mm -hmm. But if we can do that, then we can actually make a proper assessment. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I would say. Because general guessing game is not a good thing in science. Right. So a hybrid immunity study is something that would help us understand, especially when we are looking at more waves. Hybrid immunity and three rounds of vaccination versus two rounds of vaccinations. These are the studies that need to be done and then systematically, mm -hmm. systematically taking pa patients' uh, metadata into consideration that, you know, age, any other morbidities and what the whole history. With that, you get the data and you look into antibody responses and stuff like that. And we also have to do neutralization assays. Then we can make certain conclusions. These are to be done number very very systematically with a certain number of people recruited to the study and uh, systematically quick last two questions before we wrap up uh, we're also looking at uh, uh, when we talk about omicron as a variant if you had to summarize it 
how would you one thing is spreads really fast probably the severity is a lot less but in terms of behavioral pattern and the way we have to treat it how would you put it as um omicron actually has quite a lot of mutations in what you call a spike protein around 30 odd mutation 32 to 36 mutations in something called a spike protein which is used by the virus to enter our cells so because of these mutations the existing antibodies do not effectively recognize the virus that is coming in mm. but it also when you accumulate as many mutations sometimes there is a fitness cost because of that for whatever reasons it is not replicating as efficiently as the wild type uh, i mean previous uh, uh, strains such as uh, delta mm. but if you have other morbidities comorbidities and if you are not in uh, uh, in a different shape relative to our regular population even this much can create problems for us so just there is no reason for us to be complacent uh, but uh, entry wise or spread wise it is the fact that it is able to enter and the existing antibodies don't recognize as effectively is the reason why it is able to spread fast and also it has some of the mutations which are helping it spread fast quick last question what are the studies is ccmb working on at the moment specific to covid or otherwise which could help us in the long run with respect to only viral infections or otherwise uh, viral infection so there is uh, uh, two groups that are working on uh, testing out various uh, uh, drugs that are developed by companies and one group is i mean krishnan's group is working on various aspects of the sars cov2 virus what happens when it infects the cells what kind of uh, host responses are coming and stuff like that and we are doing genome sequencing at a pretty good scale uh, to understand how these uh, variants are evolving and uh, at a later point of time i'm sure you will uh, have a look at the facility um, we have done around 12 13% of the sequencings that have come out in india that percentage may vary may go down may go up depending on how many sequencing labs are coming up across india okay. but we are contributing the whatever we can in terms of sequencing we are also working on mrna vaccine but i think that's far from being ready so there is a process to it we are working and results are good but far from ready so we are uh, working also on the diagnostics but in the meantime i mean we have actually have a come up with a primer that can specifically recognize uh, omicron but uh, Uh, again we have to test out on more samples in the meantime there is a kit that is coming out by tata md and icmr mm-hmm. uh, that will be i think released on uh, soon and that would be sufficient or maybe whatever we have will uh, look for what can be done with that thank you so much dr vinay nandukuri for talking to us masking up vaccinating and most important maintaining that physical distance these are the top suggestions that experts even in the third wave are giving us and also this is something that people should keep in mind and until we learn to properly live with the virus it's not something that they are talking about this is rishika sadam for the prince from hyderabad